All right, guys, I'm in the market for a new iPad, so let's see what I can find. I have the Pro model from 2020, so let's see, uh, let's see what I can look for here. Now, given the fact that I have an iPad Pro, I should at least be looking at the iPad or better. Now, when most people are logically looking at this, they're going to want to answer three, technically four questions. Like, what are the three things you're really going to want to do with this thing? For me personally, it's drawing, watching stuff, and making videos and photo editing. Now let's take a look at each one here. So the iPad has a chip that everybody's probably used before, at least. The screen is just a tiny bit smaller than that 11-inch iPad model. Basically unnoticeable. It's got Wi-Fi 6 and 5G, which is, to my knowledge, better than the one that I have right now. And it, you know, supports the Apple Pencil, uh, Magic Keyboard, and the Folio. The Air is just the same but better. Better chip, slightly better screen, slightly better camera, actually probably the same camera. A little bit better Wi-Fi and the exact same, <clears throat> excuse me, and similar, similar accessory support. But there's at least some noticeable differences here. The chip is, you know, the, probably the most noticeable thing. It'll be a lot faster at a lot more things. And it'll likely last you the entire day, as it says right here. And not to mention it supports the newest Apple Pencil as well. And the two things that you just maybe will notice if you're actually looking for it is the better screen and the better Wi-Fi. All right, now let's take a look at the Pro. For an extra $400, you get a... An insanely ridiculous, stupidly ridiculous chip. You get a stupidly ridiculous screen, w w no matter which, you know, size of, of storage you get. The camera is insane, and it's unbelievably thin. I mean, Apple has said, like, this is the iPad they dreamed of making, but, like, I just can't, I, I can't even picture the person in my head that would need this. I know there are people out there who use iPads in their workflow, but who needs it to the, to the point that it is their entire life, right? Because that's the point of this. This is like if your entire life is spent on an iPad. I mean, it sort of justifies its own price, at least, but I don't see most people even using the M4 part of this of this iPad, including myself. But I digress. For my needs, the Air is perfect. The colors aren't my favorite, but you gotta remember, for most people, you're gonna have a case on this thing. You're not gonna be looking at it. And not to mention, there are way too many similarities between all three of these. They all have the center. Look at this. They all have the center, like, you know, uh, self selfie camera. They all have that. Two of them have basically the same camera. They all have 5G, and all of them are pretty damn quick with their, with their Wi-Fi. And not to mention the screens. Don't try to justify getting a more expensive iPad for the screen. The majority of people aren't even going to notice the difference between the iPad and the iPad Air. So in my head, there is no justifiable reason to get the Pro. Not even one. Like, oh, I, I, could, I, I could do so much with it. I could watch more YouTube. I could watch, I, I, I could do more drawing. I could do more uh, video editing. But is that worth 400 extra dollars for, for you? Not to mention, not to mention, this is not even the size that you would want, that most people would want. They would want the 13. You would want the 13 for all that. So it not, it's, it's going to be an extra 200 on top of that. Like $600. Is it worth $600 to you? to have an iPad that you won't even be able to use properly? My answer is no. My answer is no. And I think yours should be too. And two more things. One, you can't justify the camera because if you have anything newer than an 11, you have a more than good enough camera in your arsenal. Just, just airdrop it to your iPad or something or like your computer or whatever you actually do work on. And two, this does not just apply to the iPad or, like, tablet uh, phone technology. Even for something in a different realm, like getting in a new car. Let's say you're going electric and you want a Tesla. Topical, am I right? You may be looking at the Model X or Y and being like, hmm, I, I, could, I could use all that performance in the world. But you're like, but you're just a, a single person household. Like, you have you and maybe a dog or two. Not to mention you only make, like, maybe 70000 a year. Or no, not even that. Let's let's say you make one hundred and fifty thousand a year. Let's say you you potentially make enough to afford a Model Y. Hey guys, so real quick, uh, I said Model Y in the video. I meant to say Model X. That's what I meant to say. The the letters confuse me sometimes, and I got mixed up. That's what I meant to say. So imagine I'm saying that from now on. Like, what what is your reasoning for it? Okay, you want your three things, right? You want you want speed. You want room. You want you want I don't know. You want you want looks. But think think about it here all all the teslas i'm gonna tell you a little secret all the teslas are kind of the same if you're dead set on getting a dual motor just get the model the old model 3 the specs are more than good enough for almost everyone and it looks good 
but that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is don't just don't get the pro. You don't need it. You don't need it. It's unless you're literally a professional, you do not need the pro iPad. Anyways, that's all. Uh, I'm gonna be making more videos from now on, and uh, that's it. Bye. Goodbye.